Uh, welcome you to the next class on inorganic chemistry of uh, life, uh, principles and perspectives. The last two classes we have been looking at the molybdenum based enzymes and we will continue with that and uh, try completing the molybdenum based enzymes in this particular class. Okay, I already explained to you nitrogenase aspect complete, then started with oxidoreductase properties of the enzymes. These are nothing but the uh, terrene containing cofactors, molybdenum cofactors. The cofactor that is present in uh, nitrogenase is called the IFEMOCO, it is called iron molybdenum cofactor and the cofactor that is present in this is called MOCOs, that is all in a simplistic form. Now, I mentioned to you the enzyme in the oxidized form which is a molybdenum 6 form can convert the substrate to the oxidize, uh, to oxidation. When the enzyme in the reduced form is 4 plus it can reduce the substrate to the reduced one. So, therefore, these enzymes act as oxidoreductases. Now, let us look at that a little more clarity what does it mean. So, take an enzyme a, a, a modal compound. So, a modal compound is shown over there. So, you have dioxo molybdenum with dithiocarbamate DTC is nothing but dithiocarbamate as you can see from here and this is a molybdenum 6 compound. And this molybdenum 6 uh, uh, compound in presence of the triphenylphosphine will react and triphenylphosphine will try to reduce this and, and plux out the one of the oxygen to become triphenylphosphine oxide. You know the in triphenylphosphine you have uh, a, an empty orbital, it is basically a Lewis acid which can pick up the uh, uh, oxygen over there. So, therefore, triphenylphosphine has got a, a pair of uh, electrons which will accept the, accept the oxygen in the form of uh, not along with the electrons and the electrons will go to the molybdenum because triphenylphosphine uh, will go to the triphenylphosphine oxide where uh, the phosphine uh, uh, in the phosphine in the phosphorus is in 3 plus oxidation state and the phosphine oxide the phosphorus is in the plus 5 oxidation state. So, the two electrons lost. So, those two electrons are gained by oxygen. So, therefore, triphenyl phosphine oxide. So, uh, the, so therefore, it O is taken not as O2 minus then O as 2 plus the two electrons are coming here. So, that means the two electrons left over here are given to the molybdenum and the molybdenum becomes molybdenum 4. Now, you can see the out of the two oxos, one oxo is gone and now you have a only one oxo is molybdenum 4. And molybdenum 4 is a very reactive species and little amount of molybdenum 6 present in that can react. So, you call, let us call this molybdenum 6 as A species, molybdenum 4 as B species, then this A plus B will give a 4 oxidation, 6 oxidation and together is a 5, 5. So, 4 plus 6 10, 5 plus 5 10. So, you get a molybdenum 5, molybdenum 5 with a bridge oxo. Okay? And this is also very susceptible for water reaction. If when the water is present, it can even form dioxo and it can go back to the uh, molybdenum 6. So, you can see molybdenum 6 going to molybdenum 4, going to molybdenum 5, going to molybdenum 6, etcetera. So, this is what I mean by the shuttling between the molybdenum 4, 5, 6. This has to be done in a very controlled fashion by the enzyme. If it does by controlled fashion by the enzyme, then it can do oxidation reaction in one stage, reduction reaction other stage. But if the enzyme is not not surrounding the thing, then it can happen this one. So, this is a thermodynamic pit. So, formation of this, formation of this. Once it forms uh, mu oxo uh, di molybdenum 5 or mu di oxo di molybdenum uh, 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 dimer, both of these are dangerous. So, that means protein will bind to this and prevent the formation of such dimer, either this kind of dimer a mono bridge dimer or di bridge dimer that is the beauty of the enzyme in this. So, that is where we can see the modal complexes. So, in the modal complexes how would you try to make the uh, protein mimic? You make a bulky groups and that is where you can see that. So, bulky groups are put over there and therefore, you can do phosphine reaction 
triphenylphosphine oxide okay, etcetera and then to reverse this put dimethyl sulfoxide it will go to dimethyl sulfide. You can see that in one direction it will go phosphine to phosphine oxide and this one in the other direction you put the uh, dimethyl sulfoxide that will give the oxygen and give this one too. So, this is basically explained over there uh, by this kind of a uh, reaction one electron uh, reduction uh, one electron oxidation another electron reduction another electron oxidation. So, essentially this we would like to say that the molybdenum uh, 6 to 5 to 4 and the 6. So, here it is say, uh, 4 then 5 then the 6. So, if you put the reverse 6 from 5 to 4. So, when you have a dioxo it is 6 when you have monooxo it is 4. If it is monooxo plus uh, a, a sulphide double bond sulphide again it is plus 6. So, it is understandable that. Now, you understand that how these enzymes are able to act as a oxidoreductases. They are able to act as oxidoreductases because the enzyme can easily convert from 6 to 4, molybdenum 6 to molybdenum 4 and back to molybdenum 4 to molybdenum 6 by giving away the oxygen or by taking out the oxygen from and to the substrate. And this is the essence of the whole thing. So, this essence now I will explain you through few examples. I have already given you essence. Now, dimethyl sulfoxide 2 plus uh, 2 protons 2 electrons give dimethyl sulfide and you can make the reverse also if the enzyme is in reduced state. Enzyme is oxidized state you will go in the this direction, enzyme is in the reduced state you will go in this direction. Sulfite oxidase that is enzyme in the oxidized form sulfide go to sulfate. If the enzyme is in the reduced form the sulfate to sulfite. Similarly, aldehyde oxidoreductase so, aldehyde to carboxylic. Okay. So, you can go from carboxylic to aldehyde too. So, in all these cases what I want to tell you is that the enzyme can undergo oxidation and reduction committently the substrate will go reduction and oxidation. So, the enzyme if undergoes oxidized the substrate will be reduced, if the enzyme is reduced a substrate is oxidized that is all. So, same things which I have told earlier to xanthine oxidase. Uh, xanthine dehydrogenase, aldehyde oxidase, this all I have explained to you earlier. Now, let us look at uh, this basic principle or concept that we understood now by using a few examples. Uh, one of them is xanthine oxidase or xanthine uh, dehydrogenase, oxidase and dehydrogenase are one and the same. So, xanthine oxidase during the reaction you will see in the next slide it will generate some reactive oxygen species like superoxide and etcetera. So, these enzymes play an important role in the catabolism uh, of purines uh, in some species including humans also. And you can see the whole structure of this one, this is a bovine xanthine oxidase. So, in this bovine xanthine oxidase the, the red one is what? This is the molybdenum, uh, this is uh, flavin adenine. Uh, uh, that uh, cofactor, the flavin containing cofactor. Okay. And then uh, the, the one which is in orange color, this is the iron sulfur cluster and this one which is in the in the form of molybdenum cofactor okay. and this is the uh, salicylate part and this is before the uh, enzyme in the resting state. So, this is the structure in the enzyme resting state. Let us recall or recapitulate what does the xanthine oxidase do? Xanthine oxidase uh, catalyzes hypoxanthine to xanthine. You see that hypoxanthine to xanthine it will happen. There is no CO here, the CO has come. And then uh, it can do one more reaction also xanthine to uric acid. So, you see the xanthine and the uric acid. So, uric acid has one more uh, CO coming here. So, that will become xanthine to uric acid. So, from hypoxanthine to xanthine an oxidation by one oxygen and uh, uh, xanthine to uric acid is by oxidation by one more oxygen totally two oxygen oxidation from hypoxanthine to uric acid. And this is where the xanthine oxidase hypoxanthine okay, and xanthine oxidase can generate the O2 minus and this O2 minus can react with NO and give uh, the peroxy nitrite. 
Okay. So, as you, we have seen xanthine oxidase can uh, give a, a superoxide radical and the superoxide radical in turn can react with the NO give peroxynitrate which is all these are dangerous species. And of course, they can also get redox uh, uh, things by other things and on one side you can have uric acid as you can see over there. Okay. So, therefore, xanthine oxidase can also act as uh, uh, certain other uh, species like purines, terines and aldehydes. So, for example, it efficiently converts 1-methyl xanthine, 1-methyl uh, xanthine is a metabolite of caffeine in the body. Caffeine when you consume then it will it metabolizes that will give 1-methyl xanthine that will convert to 1-methyl uh, uh, uric acid. But Suppose if the system has got 3 methyl xanthine, okay, that will not get reacted because the orientation is also important. So, that is where the enzyme reactions are both position specific as well as stereo specific, and that you once again you can see that. So, so, under certain circumstances, this can create the superoxide, and, and that is where the reaction is shown over there. Okay, xanthine oxide, uh, so let us look at the mechanism. So, first of all the xanthine oxide, uh, the, the oxidase, xanthine oxidase what do you have? Xanthine oxidase has got 1 to 1, 1 terine and 1 molybdenum center. This will react with the substrate, what is the substrate? Hypoxanthine. Okay. You see that the way that it reacts and there are certain groups which I will show you in the next slide how they are supporting and this uh, undergoes a reaction over there from this oxo and this will bind to the molybdenum. So, when it binds to the molybdenum, it starting from 6 will go to the 4 and with one electron and one more electron it will go back to the 6 and it releases the product and releases the product. When it goes here the P, the P is nothing but the product. Okay. So, product is what? Oxidized form. Okay. So, uh, hypoxanthine to xanthine then xanthine to uric acid. So, this we know already. So, now again back to this. So, therefore, you have an enzyme is ready for the next cycle. So, I just showed some examples you can sit and look at uh, hypoxanthine to xanthine to uric acid. So, allopurinol to oxypurinol okay? and all of these are going from uh, the substrate to the oxidized substrate oxidized product to further oxidized. So, in this how do we know this binding thing? This binding thing has been determined uh, by using endor experiment electron nuclear double uh, resonance spectroscopy because it has the electron and there is a proton nuclei you look for a coupling from that you can get the distances. So, from the molybdenum to this carbon you can get the distance. So, therefore, you can fix how well, how far it is from that you can get whether it is bound at the molybdenum center if so through what etcetera can be obtained. So, you can take it as granted. So, now let us look at a little bit more with clarity the same thing, but it reaction uh, you can see that uh, this is the uh, molybdenum center, center having so many groups nearby okay. and this is your cofactor part of it and this is the dithiol thiolene thing. So, there is a glutamic another glutamic phenylalanine arginine. So, so many kind of glutamic residues are there. So, these are all having some role or the other we will look into that. So, you have the uh, xanthine oxidase. Uh, so, therefore, this will activate by this uh, glutamate to knock out this proton and therefore, this becomes O minus and that will uh, that will be attacking the center and this uh, when it attacks center then obviously, this will undergo. So, how does it know this position? This knows this position because this particular substrate is held by this uh, glutamate on one side, arginine on the other side. So, through all through the hydrogen bonds. So, the hydrogen bonds extended by the side chain of this glutamate and side chain of this arginine will recognize and position the, uh, the substrate exactly at this place. So, that O can attack on this. So, let us take that O attacked on this and when this O attacked there is one more activity that this glutamate will again uh, a pro give a proton provide a proton. So, you get some kind of an intermediate and that will lead to the uh, kind of a species you see that. So, that means now the oxygen is ready to go from molybdenum to the substrate then go from hypoxanthine to xanthine. Okay. 
and this can happen uh, with the 2 proton 2 electron. And in this case it is already xanthine, so xanthine to uric acid you have. So, xanthine to uric acid. So, the xanthine uh, recognized by like this kind of hydrogen bonds and the attack by this uh, will give and then finally. So, the first one is the uh, attack or this uh, oxygen at this particular center, uh, the molybdenum center and that is activated by removal of the proton and that will bind to this particular center and then the uh, and how does it know because it holds this particular substrate in this particular fashion. So, finally, uric acid. So, you see that uh, uh, the there is a lot of role of these amino acids. So, they are not directly bonded to your cofactor, they are the outside. So, that is what we refer as a secondary interactions. Now, let us look at another enzyme in this oxidoreductase uh, category, molybdenum containing enzyme that catalyzes the reduction of dimethyl sulfoxide to dimethyl sulfide. So, dimethyl sulfoxide, dimethyl sulfide. So, this particular thing is a 1 is to 2, one terine, other terine and the MOO with uh, one of the ligand. So, as I said these enzyme can undergo uh, oxidative or uh, oxidized form molybdenum 6 can undergo reduced form molybdenum 4. If you take both the centers and overlay you see that is so perfect with very little changes with very little changes. That is why the enzyme is not taking too many changes and time is enzyme is able to accept both the molybdenum 4, molybdenum 6 in that core and undergoes exchange between 4 and 6 very facile. Therefore, these enzymes are able to act as a oxidoreductase enzymes. So, this is uh, the how the cofactor is inside buried in the DMSO reductase. So, this part is a cofactor, these are all interactions etcetera, you can sit and have a look at that is not very uh, important in this. Now, DMSO oxidase, DMSO reductase. So, you have the 6 uh, uh, condition, the, the, the molybdenum 6 oxidation state which will have about minus 150 uh, millivolts. In presence of this serine residue, this will undergo uh, redox uh, facility, facile redox to plus 37. So, and therefore, and now that will be easily converted to the OH and uh, uh, and then uh, you get into the plus 80. This is very nice positive potential go back to the from 5 and then to 6 and at this stage. So, this is all the resting enzyme stages. This is the actual the active enzyme. So, from dioxo uh, molybdenum 6 to serine bound to one more uh, electron transfer kind of thing to 5 then to 6. Okay. So, finally, uh, this is ready for uh, the uh, binding to the DMS because the oxidase, oxidase will uh, oxidize the substrate. So, DMS can get oxidized to DMSO and the DMS will bind at the metal center and at this metal center then you have the oxygen and that oxygen which is this one will go to the DMS and will go as DMSO. So, in the reductase part let us start from uh, this particular uh, thing where the DMSO uh, uh, is bound and you can uh, see the changes happening or we can take even the uh, the preform uh, the uh, the prior form of this the molybdenum with serine DMSO and the DMSO binds over at the molybdenum center. Okay. And uh, then this uh, uh, again it changes its uh, uh, redox potentials also the uh, electron transfer reaction then it will go to the uh, uh, 6 okay. and then uh, it uh, uh, throws out the DMS and then pulls takes the oxygen and by taking the oxygen it will go into the uh, 5. So, that further uh, redox process uh, 5 and then uh, 4 get back to the, uh, the 4 say, state. So, oxidized and then reduced. So, therefore, that is where the thing is that. So, therefore, the in one case uh, the DMSO, uh, DMS is oxidized to DMSO, in the other case DMSO is reduced to DMS. Okay. So, as you can see over there the type of uh, reactions that are going, so the 6, the uh, 5, then the 4 etcetera, so that you can see. Okay, uh, we can look at another example. Nike 
nitrate reductase means nitrate to nitride. So, for a while you do not need to worry about this nitrate to nitride. So, it is a reductase. So, it has to reduce, it has to reduce means the enzyme has to take oxygen. If enzyme has to take oxygen means out means it should be in the reduced form that is why. So, the uh, molybdenum is molybdenum 4 S16 uh, nitride see this is NO3 can bind because it is not completely proven. So, it is put in the brackets and this will give away the NO2 and the molybdenum 6. Now, the molybdenum 4 is now molybdenum 6 this will not go back to this unless you have nitrite to nitrate part. So, otherwise there are enzymes which will reconvert uh, this from the 2 electron the 2 proton back to this. So, therefore, uh, so you add 2 electron and uh, this one so that will give uh, the reduced form. So, you can get the reduced form and you can get the oxidized form. So, in the step the molybdenum 4 goes to molybdenum 6 in this redox cycle it will add 2 protons and uh, it will add two electrons, the electrons are taken by the molybdenum 4 becomes uh, 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 sorry electron taken by the molybdenum 6 uh, and uh, then it will go back to the 4. So, 4, 5, uh, 5 and 6 then it goes back to 4 and 6 as you can see. So, the uh, involved is two protons and two electrons in the water. Okay, let us look at uh, the another example which is sulphite oxidase. Okay, so, in the previous case what we have looked at nitrate becoming nitrite. So, in this case sulphide becoming sulphate. So, it is oxidase that was reductase. This is from a model complex. Okay. So, uh, this ligand is referred as MNT dithiolate complex this is a perfect model for the enzyme and uh, the uh, HSO3 minus will give HSO4 minus and goes back. So, the molybdenum undergoes the uh, uh, redox process and the 6 uh, to the 4. So, this is a model molecule of course, you have to regenerate back this in enzyme it happens. Okay. So, let us look at the molybdenum uh, center of the enzyme this is an oxidase keep in mind whenever it is an oxidase its molybdenum is in 6 form and with is a dioxo form or one double bond oxo one double bond sulphide either of these. So, now you have a molybdenum dioxo species molybdenum uh, uh, 6 to this now you react with the sulphide SO3 minus. So, SO3 to minus binding over there through its oxygen and uh, it reduces then, then you go to the uh, molybdenum 4 and then gives an oxygen to this sulphide goes to sulphate and now the molybdenum is in not in 6 it is in 4 and this 4 is brought back to 6 by using a cytochrome C. So, cytochrome C will give 1 electron 2 times 2 1 electron and the 2 protons. So, this the whole thing will cycle. So, in the previous case uh, 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 it has gone uh, to the 6 then you are bringing to 4 in the later case it has gone to 4 you are bringing to 6. So, therefore, this is done by the external protein systems. So, you have seen the oxidative type, oxidation type, uh, reduction type both of these we, we have seen very nicely in the example. Let us see one last example in this particular thing is the aldehyde oxidase. So, what will happen when the aldehyde oxidizes and when the aldehyde oxidizes what is the oxidized form of aldehyde carboxylic acid. So, it is both electrons as well as oxygen aldehyde has got 1 C 1 O carboxylic acid has got 2 O's. So, therefore, you need to add oxo species to that. So, this in this aldehyde uh, oxidase you can see it is again a complex kind of an enzyme. So, you have a uh, the FAD binding domain uh, with a flamine adlo adenine nu dinucleotide. So, red, uh, which is shown in this uh, stick form this is a 50, 40 kilo Dalton and there is another part of the enzyme which is 20 kilo Dalton 
and this has got the iron sulfur cluster and this iron sulfur cluster is a 2 iron 2 sulfur cluster. This is a 20 kilo Dalton, this is 40 kilo Dalton and this whole thing is 80 kilo Dalton and this uh, domain where the molybdenum cofactor is there. So, uh, uh, this is one of the electron transfer center, this is another electron transfer center, this is the enzyme center uh, core in other words sorry catalytic center. So, it is basically everything is together is enzyme and this is the catalytic part of the enzyme. So, what is it doing aldehyde it picks up and converts into carboxylate acid. So, you can see so it is oxidation. So, the enzyme in the oxidized form which is in the 6 plus form and this is bonded to that as we know and in the aldehyde oxidase it is double bond O double bond S. Now, this will react with the aldehyde and this is act the water is activated by a carbox glutamate and that will have an interaction with this as you can see here and that is picked up the proton and you have the O H is transferred to the carbonyl center to make into a carboxylic uh, species here and this will go out and then the enzyme uh, will go into reduced form. Now, this has to be re brought back here by other uh, proteins like cytochromes etcetera because cytochromes are well known electron transfer agents. So, so we have seen a few examples uh, both oxidative type as well as reductive type and nicely the enzyme goes through molybdenum <coughs> 6 to molybdenum 4 and back. If you take a small molecule molybdenum complex it will not do because to molybdenum 5 uh, when it forms a molybdenum 5 then it can interact with another when it forms a molybdenum 4 it can interact with another molybdenum 6 and form molybdenum 5 molybdenum 5 uh, oxo bridge. In presence of water it can form even the dioxo bridge. So, there is a danger. So, small molecules cannot easily mimic this enzyme unless you do a lot of synthetic modification to prevent such dimer formation. Where did we see earlier one such dimer formation? The oxygen transport hemoglobin there the ion porphyrin very easily gets uh, dimerized if there is no preventing groups. So, enzyme itself prevents. In summary, so let, let me say that the molybdenum enzymes in summary that we have looked at one enzyme which is nitrogenase it is absolutely a reductase type. It can convert the uh, uh, nitrogen to ammonia and many non specific reactions are also there and many places with a 2 electron 2 proton kind of a reactions it is called capable of doing. So, it can be <coughs> used for uh, probably if somebody is interested can isolate these enzymes from the natural source arrest on some solid surface and you can start using like a factory for synthesizing the products. The second part we have looked at a, a huge range of reductase oxidases you can see nitrite reductase uh, in part pyridoxal oxidase, DMSO reductase, DMSO oxidase also, biotin sulfoxide reductase, xanthine oxidase, aldehyde oxidase. So, you see nitrite uh, ox reductase will give nitrate to nitrite, pyridoxal oxidase, pyridoxal to pyridoxic acid, DMSO reductase to DMSO to DMS, dimethyl sulfide, biotin sulfoxide reductase, biotin sulfoxide to biotin xanthine oxidase, the, uh, xanthine to uric acid, aldehyde to carboxylic acid these are the things. So, the first one is a very complicated that the nitrogenase and the nitrogenase requires a large number of 1 1 1 electron kind of things. The second kind of things are uh, uh, the trick of oxo transfer reactions, oxo transfer followed by electron transfer followed by proton transfer. So, basically a, a proton transfer electron transfer coupled with an octo oxo transfer. In other words, oxo transfer is coupled with proton and electron so that the molybdenum can undergo plus 6, plus 5, plus 4 without getting dimerized, without getting the reaction being arrested in this. So, thus we conclude the part of the molybdenum enzymes by giving all these details and the uh, mechanistic aspects. Thank you very much.